All right. So if you want to introduce yourself for the video or whatever. Uh, hello. I am Nelson. I made Unturned, sort of, and now I'm working on Unturned 4. Gotcha. That's not a very good intro. I should try. Uh... <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome to the 18th installment of Somebody Talking Deeply About Unturned. Is this format overdone yet? Probably, but I'm going to be talking about this anyway, because believe it or not, this isn't another video talking about how the maple strike is broken. <laughs> No, for the first segment, I'm going to be talking about the Unturned Official Discord. If you're unfamiliar with the Unturned Official Discord, it's just the official Discord for Unturned. It's pretty self-explanatory. Now, the thing about the Unturned Official Discord is that the server itself is pretty low par. And the main reason for this is because of the staff team. Now, the staff team, they're essentially the Discord moderator stereotype. No memes in general chat. I've had my own experience with one of the moderators. Now, I've decided I'm going to blur this guy's name. However, if people that are in the Discord see this video, you'll 100% know who I'm talking about. So essentially, this moderator got offended over a meme posted at his expense and muted a guy for three days over it. Here's the actual meme that was posted. Of course, his name is blurred. What's funny is that he muted this guy because apparently the meme was off topic. This basically means that the meme wasn't related to Unturned, therefore it was deleted. But you could clearly see it was related to Unturned. And this is true, by the way. This guy would just mute people without warning in the general chat because they asked for help. It's really retarded. And I'm glad I'm not showing his name because I don't think this guy deserves any form of publicity. But not only that, he's kind of strange he was saying shit about buzzwords and i guess this guy is saying my shit is invalid because i use a word that is fashionable at a particular time in a particular context i mean the word works redditor like a fat sweaty redditor a coomer discord moderator like this is what this guy is also i will showcase this however so in this argument, he thought that, I guess, my job and my physical appearance was relevant to the conversation. And later on in the conversation, I'm guessing that this guy is like a 16-year-old, considering, you know, how he's acting. But apparently, he's above the age of 18. I don't know. It's just kind of weird to ask a minor what their physical appearance is if you are claiming that you're an adult. I don't know. I mean, that fits the stereotype of a Discord moderator, if I'm being honest. But forgetting about this literal walking buzzword, the server itself is just okay, and one thing that they do, which I agree with, is an election to vote in staff members. This is actually a good idea. However, it has been brought to my attention that the elections are actually rigged. Now, I know talking about rigged elections today is kind of a topical thing, and it's almost controversial to mention the phrase rigged election. However, I have evidence that elections on the unturned official discord are rigged and that people like this guy are still admin because the whole thing's rigged which is kind of funny because i think if there was an actual legitimate democratic process this fucking guy would not be moderator all right charles so walk me through how the unturned official discord elections are rigged well there, there, there's a lot of things that are very strange um, when it comes to the unofficial Discord server, 
Um, it's very suspicious in my opinion and I don't know fully if it is uh, correct or not but I do know one thing I will, I'll explain later but main thing that's very suspicious about the elections that happened back in October were effectively they had four um, voting polls all that were claimed to be faulty due to the bot not calling the votes and were closed and then re-put up over and over and over again into the last one which is the one that the all the old moderators got voted in and no one new came into the picture except for people who are already established like um i remember correctly owl who was a debugger brett as well and a server owner but it was it was very suspicious during that time when i was there specifically because of how many times the the bot was called in to make sure that it was working correctly especially when it came to who was winning the polls and every single one of them as much as i wish i could have gotten the the screenshots but most of them are gone now it's only a memory for some people a lot of the people who are winning the polls originally were a bunch of new people who were applied to be a moderator through the email that molt had gave everyone and basically people were winning that were not the original staff team and I find it suspicious that randomly they just kept doing it until the actual regular staff team won the election. I remember a um, a person specifically named and I think Anderson who won by like 60. Who was winning by 60 and the, other, the next person was winning by like 10 to 20. And then um, mysteriously, Molt says um, the poll bot, you know, has an issue to it. And then removes the entire poll and then goes ahead and uh, starts another one two days later, I think a day later. And um, then basically he was completely not even a part of the poll at the next poll. If I were going to make a theory of this, it was just to kick out a lot of the people who were uh, who were trying to win the election at that time. It seemed very odd that the bot had so many problems four times in a row. It, it was very... Uh, very strange and i don't fully believe that that uh, there was any problem with the bot and i believe that it was just to get rid of certain uh people from being staffed just to cut in real quick i actually asked the guy charles is talking about that was winning the election addison and he was saying that they reset it a few times he thinks twice i just wanted to put that in because Charles is saying four times, but we don't really have any proof, so there's some proof that it was reset more than once. And um, to further this point, there is a person, a part of the Uncharted Official Discord server, named um, Sherlock Golds. Um, a lot of people that was that was a part of the Uncharted Official Discord server um, during that time knows that Sherlock was an active community member in the Discord server, and people knew who he was. He was so uh, he was a pretty big name a server essentially he originally was a staff member and retired and was applied to become a staff member again was accepted to be able to run and then as the elections were going on and as he was winning one of the polls he was well quote unquote voted out by the rest of the staff the staff team effectively removing him from the polls and effectively removing him completely from the unofficial discord server um which was very strange in my opinion and from what i know um personally there is uh there was no reason to it absolutely not i understand that there was a um that the staff team thinks that he's an, uh, an evil person or whatever but as seeing that he was a staff member beforehand and that he would you know step down himself i don't see how um how like you know someone like that could be such a bad person especially when he was originally a staff member and he wasn't voted out of power he retired so that i feel like that was suspicious to me as well it, you know it's you know when an old staff member comes back to run your entire staff team doesn't just like go ahead and make a vote randomly as they were winning the polls to kick him out i feel like they were trying to prevent him from coming back as staff which is also a problem it was, is a probable theory and i personally believe that's the real issue but i don't know why and it adds to that the elections were somewhat tampered with especially with the bot being a uh being like quote unquote broken and the removal of sherlock kind of it makes me believe that this has um, some merit to it i don't know it's very it's very suspicious it's very suspicious that a staff team you know um would would you know be losing the entire staff team would be losing the elections and then immediately just go ahead and call it off because of quote unquote bot situation and go back up the next day again fail bot again and again until 
finally they got all the the right old staff on the exact same you know winning side and the removal of sherlock it's very um suspicious and i don't fully believe that the elections were legitimate because of those two reasons and um i think that's what i'm going to say for now um, it seems like the staff team's just hungry for power and don't really care about the, the integrity of the untrained official discord server i disagree with a lot of the way that they run the discord server and i hope eventually one day um a lot of these staff members will get cycled out and not have to be a part of this community, this uh, this great community that we have. But for the time being, I'm just gonna speak on on this side and explain what I've seen and some of the corruption that I've seen. Well, I also don't agree with the way that the moderators run the unturned official Discord, but one thing that they did recently that I seriously don't agree with was the banning of Danaby2. Now, if you are unfamiliar with who Danaby2 is, he created Elver, and he's made a bunch of other unturned maps for the community. He's essentially carrying unturned updates at this point with Renaxon. Elver is the most downloaded created map in the history of unturned and he was banned from the unturned official discord over a profile picture now the reason that they banned him over a profile picture was apparently because the profile picture was considered inappropriate i don't personally know dan but i do know that the profile picture was a meme because my good friend doug is actually friends with him and this is what doug had to say about his ban it's kind of cringe but like like seriously though it was i mean he was asked to change his picture because it was kind of weird um but like i sort of understand because it's like a you know family friendly discord sorta even though it's like not really i don't know because they're partnered with discord they can't really like break tos in some places so it's like there's a bit of a gray or area of what you can post and you what you can't post so i just want to say like I want to make a comment about the official discord i'm not going to name names but a lot of the people that moderate and run it seem to they're very condescending and uh they don't really seem like they can take a joke at all and i mean that more than any anything like it's it like you could tell a joke and they would be like oh that's not funny there's a three-day ban like if they don't like the joke they would just you know ban you for three days just because you don't like the joke like Personally, I think some of them need to, uh, some of the admins and mods in there need to kind of chill out a bit. Cause, like, I mean, I saw a guy post a meme about a staff member and it wasn't even that offensive. It was, it was just like a, a dance, like, it was a, it was a video I made, but he captioned it something else. And, uh, it was making fun of one of the staff members. And the guy got, uh, I think it was, muted for three days it wasn't anything like offensive towards the staff member or anything it was just a stupid little joke and the guy got muted for three days like they seem like very sensitive uh people sometimes and they try to play off as a, oh yeah we're tough guys but it's like come on man <laughs> like basically long story short they they seem like generic discord mods like when people make memes about discord mods they're the type of people that they're they're joking about now of course i went to danaby to himself to get a statement on his ban and this is what he had to say okay my statement i was banned for my profile picture which is kind of sus but it didn't have any nudity which in my opinion was kind of unfair but i don't know now circling back to the discord rigged elections i looked over the rules and sherlock gold didn't break any rules that would disqualify him for running for staff also according to the rules of the unturned official discord staff cannot abuse their powers um considering a guy got offended over a meme and muted a guy for three days i think that's abuse of power <laughs> chapter two is going to be about unturned role play and also unturned server hosting companies i'm going to be talking about companies because i recently dropped a sponsorship with modern hosting and i thought it'd be interesting to kind of expose how this hidden world of unturned kind of works but first i want to talk about unturned rp and one issue with unturned rp that i have is 
this whole issue where someone will buy an MVP rank for like 40 bucks and then immediately get diplomatic immunity on the server and be able to break rules. Now, of course, I myself have complained a shit ton about unturned RP, so I'm handing the mic over to my two Sicilies. This guy reviews unturned servers and unturned roleplay, and I think he's probably more qualified to talk about this. Many people have asked me why I'm making my unturned RP server review series. The answer to that question is not exactly simple. Obviously, legitimate criticism is always necessary to a community for maintaining high standards, and initially, when the RP genre was still in its early phase, players were able to voice themselves by deciding which servers got to die or not. Those were also the golden days for unturned RP. Unfortunately, as time progressed, some less than wonderful servers started to consolidate and managed to maintain an active player base mostly made out of their donators and staff members. And also random players would join for one day and leave the server behind forever the day after. As time went on, somewhere in mid-2017, quality servers on which I used to play started closing, both because their founders and staff members were getting old and needed to focus on their actual life rather than this Roblox-like game. And as those good servers closed, many not-so-good ones started popping up left and right and center. Most would still die due to extremely small or non-existent player bases, but some would remain. A common trend I've noticed about these scummy servers is that their owners seem to be extremely greedy people, and as a result, many of them don't make it a single month with their projects. Those few who do manage to cling on to relevancy by at least trying to do the very bare minimum in order to keep their extremely small, lawyer player base, well, playing. This kind of server had completely taken over the RP scene by 2018 and has been ruling it to this day and most likely will continue to in the coming years, with the rise of even shittier Rutuber ran servers. It was also during this period that I opened my own RP server with the goal of showing the RP community that you could have quality RP without needing to join a whitelisted server. You may not want to believe my words, but with a lot of effort, I was largely successful at this, and to this day, even after the closing of my server last December, I still have many of my former players on my Discord, whom you can ask for more information, if you so wish. But before anyone asks, none of them are donators, I did not have a donation system. Now why is that? There is a common misconception, I mean, completely and utter lie actually, that server owners promote, and that is that it costs a fuck ton of money to run a server. Something they use to justify their incredibly overpowered and blatantly pay-to-win donation perks, which you can buy on their shitty web stores. The truth is that it doesn't even cost 10 bucks to rent a server from a good provider like GTX. Don't use Pine Hosting or Modern Hosting, their founders are also scamming and greedy unturned server owners. And if a server really tries to play the commission and plugins are expensive card, then they actually need to show how much those cost, because prices can vary a lot depending on a number of different criteria. Regardless, none of this, not even mod commissions, can justify a server selling a $150 rank to children. So, in short, I have created my series as a way to both critique servers from an objective point of view, by discussing the kind of experience they provide alongside the quality of their staff teams and communities, but also from a moral one, when it comes to bad server practices like pay to win and favoritism. Once again, thanks to Zeman for allowing me to briefly discuss the painfully disgusting state of the modern unturned RP community. I'd like to thank my two Sicilies for participating in this video, and if you guys want to go subscribe to him, his link will be in the description. But now that that's out of the way, I'm going to be talking about unturned server hosting companies. Now, my two Sicilies actually already covered this in his testimony, where basically these servers are overpriced and you can buy a $10 server from GTX. Now, I'm going to explain to you how these unturned server hosting companies actually work and how what they're doing is actually kind of disingenuous. So, as my two Sicilies said, you can get a good server from GTX. Now, essentially, what companies like Modern Hosting and Pine Hosting do is they are essentially the middleman. So you go to them to try to host an unturned server because you probably got an advertisement through a YouTube video. <coughs>
Mr. Spammel, and you will go to their website to purchase a server. Now, essentially what these companies do is this company essentially just goes to a good server provider like GTX and essentially rents a server on your behalf and they'll charge double the price so they can make a profit. So just to break this down, you go to their website, buy a $30 server, and let's say it cost $15 to actually run that server from a good server provider. These companies will go to that provider, rent you a server, send it to you, and they take at least 50% of the profits made. That's how they make their money. Now, as you can probably tell, this is kind of disingenuous. If I had to recommend an unturned based server hosting company, I would recommend Lime Hosting because it has been confirmed that Lime actually hosts their own servers and doesn't just buy them from a third party. Now that that's out of the way, I'd also like to reinforce what my two Sisley said about VIPs getting to do whatever the fuck they want on unturned servers because they bought a rank. Now I actually have an example of this exactly happening, except this went beyond somebody breaking rules in game. So essentially, on Brad's Life RP, there was a streamer. Now I'm not gonna say the streamer's name or any of the people involved. Essentially, we were kind of just messing around with the streamer. And he was getting really angry and eventually he stopped the stream and for some reason he thought my friend Doug was doing most of this stuff when in actuality it was more of me kind of trolling him and Doug was kind of just watching. So essentially the guy threatens to dox Doug and everyone associated with him, which means he threatened to dox Doug, me, two of the server admins, my girlfriend, and a 13 year old. Now obviously we sent all of this to staff. In fact, staff was technically involved because two of the admins were getting threatened with doxing. And this was all because the guy was permabanned from the server. Now this streamer was being very disingenuous. So essentially he had a donation goal for his dog and we confirmed that this guy was actually taking money out of the charity fund for his dog and using it for his own purposes like buying the 42 dollar rank on brad's life rp he bought a 42 dollar mega rank on brad's life rp and he went to brad and asked for a refund after he was permabanned and brad gave him two options either he could get his money back and he'll remain banned or he can get unbanned and be on thin ice now i don't know why brad offered him this choice at all and now this guy is back on the server after threatening to dox six people he was unbanned and he is still playing on the server today now of course i'm not sending any ill intent to brad i actually don't know if he was aware that this guy threatened to dox us however we have screenshots and evidence and i actually called non-emergency because i was pretty concerned because you know my girlfriend was involved that's also why i'm not saying the streamer's name or some of the people involved because if this actually goes legal and actually goes into a courtroom or somebody gets arrested uh me shitting on the streamer would look really bad however if this whole thing blows over and there's no legal case i might make a video on the streamer because that is a whole other story in itself and it's really funny but what i just stated and the things i'm showing you now clearly shows that there is a bias for people that pay to win on unturned servers now this is incredibly unfair i've been in so many situations where i get KOS'd on a roleplay server by an MVP and I get banned. That's the state of unturned roleplay. It's an absolute mess. It's an absolute mess. Alright, now that was essentially the video and most of the things I wanted to bring up. So now I'm just going to bring up some of the things that were criticized in my other video, the problems with Unturned. Now, of course, I'm not going to go over every criticism, but I'm going to go over the biggest one, which was Nelson should make his own anti-cheat. Yeah, so despite the video getting an overwhelming amount of support, which I thank you all for, I was actually wrong about this particular part of the video. I should have asked around the community about how this stuff works before making an entire segment of the video about it but yeah i'm fairly certain nelson probably thinks that's one of the worst suggestions he's ever got but um yeah 
in that segment of the video, I am wrong. I just wanted to bring that up because I've been told it kind of almost ruins the entire video. Of course, in my opinion, I think that video is still very good just in terms of editing, even if what I'm saying is wrong. As for the video itself, that kind of just came from a place where I was kind of tired of Unturned at that point. And I was in the same situation Zumbi was in when he made his video, where like, I'm just kind of screaming for help because I'm getting sick of playing the same thing over and over. I was just tired of it at that point. I'm not necessarily that tired of the game. I still usually get on at least like once a week to go on and have fun and, you know, troll role players, because that's basically all I do now is just troll role players. It's not even about the KOS anymore. I just like to go up to people and yell shit like Joe Mama, and it's just funny to me. Um, but yeah, uh, I apologize to Nelson for asking him to make his own anti-cheat when he obviously doesn't know how to make an anti-cheat. However, what I will say is that in 4.0, he should probably keep the anti-cheat up to date more. I don't know how you would do that, of course. I'm I'm doing it again where I don't really know what I'm talking about. All I do know is that Battle Eye isn't necessarily implemented into Unturned the best way, and there's probably a better way to do it where you can keep it updated more frequently. But yeah, that's essentially all I had to say.